Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I remember a number of years ago when my boys were much younger that Trish and I were working with them on doing puzzles. Now, if you've ever worked with kids doing puzzles, you know puzzles are rather easy, especially when the picture is very clear and distinct and all the lines come together well. But when you find those areas of the puzzle where you've got a vast blue sky or a dark, dense, deep green forest, the problem gets more difficult. I remember working with Dietrich on one of those types of puzzles. It was a deep green piece. The image was not all that distinct. And yet he and I knew exactly where the piece was supposed to go. He just couldn't figure out how to get it in there. Well, being the fixer that I am, I wanted just to put it in there and be done with it. But as I went to put the piece in, Dietrich said, no, Daddy, I can do it. I can do it. Okay. So I back off and I watch him for another 30 seconds, maybe a minute. And he's really frustrated. He can't quite get the piece oriented just right. And so I go to help him and put it in place again. And he pushes me back. Daddy, I can do it. Okay. Well, this happens another time or two until Dietrich loses all frustration. He can't figure out how the piece goes in. And so I very gently take his hand, turn the piece, and we together put it in place. Well, there's a very similar lesson in our gospel reading for today. Jesus is once again on his way to Jerusalem. He has set his face towards his passion and crucifixion. But as he goes, he is teaching and preaching along the way. And he stops at one particular place and he tells the parable that we heard today. And the parable goes that there are two men who go up to the temple to pray. The first is a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. And the Pharisee, when he goes to pray, he goes out, he finds a place that's just a little bit isolated, probably elevated. And in a very loud voice, he begins to pray. He says, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give tithes of all that I get. His pride and his arrogance were dripping from every word. And although his type of prayer would seem out of place today, realize that boasting and bragging were not only accepted, they were expected in Roman times. If you did not tell others about how great you were, nobody else would. Well, the other man, of course, was a tax collector. The same type of guy that the Pharisee was pointing to and thanking God that he wasn't. Well, the tax collector goes up to the temple and he too finds a quiet place to pray. But he doesn't raise his voice. He stays quiet. And in words barely above a whisper so that no one but he and the Lord can hear, he prayed, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's all he said. There was no soapbox, no public pronouncement of greatness, no long oratory. Just a simple confession and a plea for God's mercy. That's the parable. And so Jesus takes these two men and he places them before his audience. And he tells them that it's not the Pharisee who goes away justified. It's not the one you would think who does all the right things. It's the tax collector. 
Now, when you start comparing and contrasting these two, there is certainly the issue of pride and humility that comes forward. And Jesus even closes the parable by saying, For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. It's a common theme throughout the New Testament, especially whenever Jesus is interacting with the Pharisees. In other words, do not think too highly of yourself. It's a good lesson for all of us. But there's another underlying issue here. You see, the Pharisee, when he prayed, sort of tongue-in-cheek, he thanked the Lord for everything that he wasn't. But then on the turn of a dime, he started boasting and bragging about everything that he did. I fast twice a week. I give a tithe of everything I own. What a great person I am. But for all of his good deeds, for everything he did which people thought was right, Jesus says he leaves the temple empty-handed. He is not justified before God. And his good works have done him no good at all. Now in contrast, the tax collector, when he prays, he doesn't boast or brag about anything he's done. We don't know, but it's entirely possible that he has given alms to the poor. He may have tithed a full 10% of his income, maybe 15 or even 20%. He may have fasted, not only twice, but possibly three or four times that week. But he doesn't bring it up. Because the truth is, none of that matters. He doesn't brag about all he's done. Instead, he simply realizes his poverty before God. And then begs for the Lord's mercy. And it's right there that we find the key to salvation. You know, most of us sitting here today are pretty good people. I've gotten to know most of you personally on a one-on-one -on -one level. And although I don't think there's anyone here who would consider themselves perfect, on the whole, we're a pretty good bunch of folk. Most of us come to worship regularly. I can tell you we give very generously to the church. Many of us volunteer at the service, and some of us even volunteer outside the service at other organizations throughout our community. And to the best of my knowledge, there is not one of you who has involuntarily spent a night in one of our local prisons. Overall, we're a pretty good bunch of people. But the truth is, Although your good deeds certainly please the Lord, they do not add two bits to your salvation. And it doesn't matter whether you boast and brag about your good deeds or not. Many of us, we try to do it on our own, much like Dietrich in the puzzle. We try to find the right combination of our good deeds and our prayers and our worship, trying to figure out how to make it all fit together. But the truth is, no matter how hard you try, it won't work. We cannot do it ourselves. But Jesus can. When Jesus tells this parable, he is on his way to Jerusalem, not just to celebrate the Passover, but to literally redefine it through his own blood. The old covenant that was always meant to point forward to the Lord's salvation, it will finally find its fulfillment in Jesus Christ. When God's holy and perfect lamb is sacrificed on the cross and sheds his blood for you. And by his sacrifice, by his 
one good deed, we find the mercy that the tax collector was begging for. And that, in the end, is the difference between the Pharisee and the tax collector. It's the same difference between the proud and the humble, the unrighteous and the justified. It has nothing to do with all of your good deeds. Our Lord loves your good works and he smiles at all you do for others. But it's not going to get you into heaven. No, the only thing that truly matters is that one good deed of Jesus Christ. His blood shed for you. And so today I encourage you to please come. Come to the table of the Lord. Partake of the new covenant in His blood and receive the full and free mercy of God. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen.